Hi friends, my name is Darina Lazo Gilmore and I'm excited to share with you today a devotional called His Breath in Our Lungs. And before I get started, I just want to let you know that I have a weekly newsletter that I send out called My Glory Gram. So if you'd like to get links to these devotionals and other things that I'm writing, if you'd like to hear the latest um, recommendations that I have for books and recipes and other things, I would just encourage you to go to my website, darinagilmore.com, and to sign up for the Glory Gram. And so let's get started. You know, I had an experience in June where I went to Colorado. I'm from Central California, and I got to fly out to Colorado and stay for several days in Estes Park. Estes Park is at the base of Rocky Mountain National Park, and it's at about 3,500 feet elevation. And while I was there, I was spending some time with some friends for a writer's retreat. We were staying in these beautiful cabins that were kind of like townhouses. And one morning, I decided to go out for a run, which is a regular part of my rhythm. And as I got on the path, I started running. And as I was running, my chest kind of pulled tight and I tried to fill my lungs, but it was really hard to breathe. And I remembered what people had said about Colorado that sometimes when you're up at elevation, the air feels almost thin. And so I actually had to slow down. I couldn't run my normal pace and I had to give myself some grace for that run because I'm a valley girl. I live in the Central Valley of California and so my lungs are used to a different elevation and I had to acclimate, I had to get accustomed to running in Colorado. And you know, in life sometimes we find ourselves at these higher altitudes and we don't expect that it's gonna be hard to breathe. Maybe it's just an unfamiliar situation or a transition. Maybe it's just thinking about a trauma or a trial that you endured while you were a child. Or maybe it's some of the, the challenges that happen in our marriages, in our friendships, even with our children. And those are the times where I feel like sometimes it's hard to breathe. And it's easy at those times for us to kind of want to default into isolation, to, to draw back from people and to draw back from God. But I believe that it is during those times that God wants to breathe life into us. I believe that it is during those times that we actually can share our stories and our experiences with one another that we can bear witness to the truth and the pain that we have survived and we can give each other breath. We can offer each other life. And so breathing then becomes a little bit easier when I'm traveling the journey with someone by my side. I can inhale long and I can breathe out. The Hebrew name for God is Yahweh. And when those Hebrew letters, Y-H-W-H, are pronounced, some people say it sounds like this long breath, Yahweh. And it's like this taking of a deep breath. And I don't think it's an accident or a coincidence that this is true because my God himself is the one who fashioned Adam out of the dust and the word of God says that he breathed life into Adam, into Adam's lungs. And so today I want to share with you a story from the Old Testament, from the book of Ezekiel. And if you're not familiar with Ezekiel, it is a book that was written by the prophet priest Ezekiel. And it was during the time of the exile from Babylon. And so he was writing to the community of people that were exiled from Babylon and this was during the reign of Nebuchadnezzar II. So in Ezekiel chapter 37, which is where our text is today, the prophet is talking about this valley of dead, dry bones. And it's this symbol of lifelessness. He's looking out over this. And God is the one who speaks life over these bones. And so I'm going to read for you Ezekiel chapter 37 verses 5 and 6 to give us just a taste of what this looked like. God's words, I will attach tendons to you and make flesh come upon you and cover you with skin. I will put breath in you and you will come to life and then you will know that I am the Lord. 
And then you know what God does? He actually breathes into those dry bones. And those dry bones, they miraculously rattle and they snap to life. And these bones that were once dry and dead, now they are restored and they are alive and they are moving right before Ezekiel's eyes. And it's God's breath that made all the difference. And so I want us to remember today that God is the one who breathes life into us. And I also want us to remember that sometimes God uses people in our community to breathe life into us. When, when we share our stories with each other, it buoys up our spirits. It gives us strength and confidence to move forward. It's like a breath of fresh air. And so I'm always looking for opportunities to breathe new life into the people around me. I'm a mom of three kids. My kids are ages 7, 10, and 13. And so every day I have the opportunity to breathe life into my daughters. You know what, sometimes that means I need to soften my tone with them when I am feeling irritated. It also means that I need to speak truth to them, encouraging them to try new things. It means that I have the opportunity also to give them that pep talk, to give them words of life so that they can do the hard things that they are facing in their days. Now, the other desire that I have is that I could be life-giving to the people around me, my friends in particular, and give them life-giving words. Sometimes that means calling out a gift that I see in someone else. Sometimes it means speaking truth in love when they are struggling with self-doubt, with shame, with insecurity. It's giving them breath. One of my favorite songs is by the band All Sons and Daughters, and it's called Great Are You, Lord. And I remember in 2014 that this song became very meaningful to me. And that was the year that my husband was diagnosed with stage four cancer. And during that year, um, in the, the summer month of that year, I, think, I believe it was in August, we had some friends from our church who were part of the worship band who called me and they asked if they could come over and just play some worship music for my husband. They knew that he was not able to go to church anymore because his body was so weak. And of course, we welcomed them. We were so grateful for just even their offer to do something like this. And they came over, and I remember that they played this song, Great Are You, Lord. And it was my introduction to this beautiful song. And I remember my husband was sitting on our big red couch before the window that you could see our Japanese maple tree. And our three daughters were there, and they started dancing as the music was playing as our worship band played guitar and then was singing. And these are the words that may be familiar to some of you of that song. It says, it's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise. We pour out our praise to you only. And a little bit later in the song, one of the other verses, it says, you give hope. You restore every heart that is broken. Great are you, Lord. Ironically, during that time, the cancer was spreading to my husband's lungs. And it was difficult for him to breathe at times. And I did not know that it would be only a few weeks later that he would soar to heaven to meet Yahweh, the one who breathed life into him. And that song was so meaningful to me during that time and it still is today. I actually had the chance uh, about six months after he passed away to go to the concert here in Fresno where I live, the All Sons and Daughters concert. And I sat in the front row with my friends and I let the words of that song just wash over me. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise. We pour out our praise to you only. And you know what, this song has been meaningful to me over the last five years because it, it's kind of been following me. Every time, okay, I won't say every time, but more times than I can count, when I have shown up to speak at a women's event or to attend a conference or maybe to speak at a women's retreat, the worship set will include Great Are You, Lord. 
not by my request or my prompting, but I believe it is God saying to me, Darina, I see you. And it is a reminder to me that it is his breath in my lungs. It is a reminder to me to be thankful that I am breathing today on these borrowed breaths. It is a reminder that it's a privilege to be breathing and to be able to share my story with others so that I might reflect his glory. And you have that opportunity as well, friends. It's his breath in your lungs. And so I'm gonna ask you to do something with me. I'm gonna ask you to close your eyes and I'm gonna ask you to open your palms and I am going to invite you to just breathe. We're gonna breathe in through our noses for four counts and then out through our mouths for four counts. Breathing in, two, three, four, and out, two, three, four. And let's repeat that, let's breathe in, two, three, four, and breathe out, two, three, four. One more time, let's breathe in together and breathe out together. And let's think about Yahweh. Let's think about our God who breathed life into Adam and breathes life into us today, even when our bones feel dry and weary, even when we are broken. He breathes life into us. And friends, I wanna pray for you. Dear Lord, we just want to acknowledge today that you are the one who breathes life into us. Lord, help us. I believe that there are some who are watching this video right now and they're having a difficult time breathing, maybe literally or metaphorically, that, that they're traveling through a time of trial, God. Would you come alongside them? Would you help, and help them to just breathe deeply and to trust you, Lord? And I also pray for my friends, my sisters and brothers who might be watching this today, who are breathing steady, who have air filling their lungs and who have a story to share. God, would you give them courage so that they might share it with a friend, a son, a daughter, a spouse, a neighbor, that they might breathe life-giving words into someone else through their story. Lord, we are grateful for the ways that you breathe life into us each day and we offer our breath to you. In Jesus' name, amen.